The international community is vehemently opposed to Israel's claims in Jerusalem, and this opposition is much stronger regarding Israel's contested possession of the Temple Mount. Is the reconstruction of the Temple any closer to being completed today? The construction of the Temple of God in Jerusalem is an important topic throughout the history and prophecy of the Bible. As the Second Temple was destroyed in 70 AD, and the Temple itself does not currently exist in Jerusalem, many scholars of Bible prophecy are curious as to when the Third Temple will be constructed. You're watching The Unknown Facts. Let's talk about the discovery that has also raised questions about the potential impact of the temple on the surrounding area and its inhabitants. With so much at stake, it is clear that this issue will need to be carefully considered before any further progress can be made. All the Hebrew prophets foretold what the exiles of Israel would eventually return to the Promised Land and that the temple would be restored in the end times. Then the nations will know that I, the Lord, make Israel holy when my sanctuary is among them forever. Ezekiel 37, 28. Things are really starting to heat up as far as the end of the world is concerned. Since the destruction of the temple, the Jewish people have flocked to the Western Wall, also known as the Wailing Wall, to pray for its restoration, seek priestly blessings, make atonements for sins, and express their grief. Third Temple and the prophesied return to Israel. I will gather my scattered Israel. They will return to their ancient cities and make a new home for themselves there. They'll start growing grapes for wine and edible flowers for bouquets and fruit trees for eating. Never again will Israel be uprooted from the country I have given them. I will plant them securely in their land. Amos 9, 14 to 15. Many skeptics in the world are eager to declare that God does not recognize the Jewish people and that Israel's revival has been entirely the work of humans. However, the Bible reveals that God never intended to permanently abandon his chosen people. You, Israel, my servant, you, Jacob, whom I have chosen. You, descendants of Abraham, my friend. You, whom I have taken from the ends of the world and called from its remotest parts and said to you, You are my servant. I have chosen you and not rejected you. This is a quote from Isaiah chapter 49, verse 9. God's plan for the return of the Jewish people to Israel has always been on God's terms, not man's. And just as the prophets predicted, after 19 centuries of dispersion across the globe, the Jewish people are once again making their way home to the Holy Land. Have no apprehension, I am with you. I will gather your progeny from the Far East and bring you together from the Far West. Give them up, I tell the North. And if you're down South, don't stop them. My children come from far away, my daughters from the ends of the earth. Scripture reference Isaiah 43, 5-6. Not only are Israelis returning to their homeland, but the Temple Institute and the Temple Mount Faithful Movement are making strides towards constructing the third temple on the Temple Mount. It's a good question. Why construct a third temple? Here I am with the kids the Lord has blessed me with. In Israel we represent the Lord God Almighty who makes his home on the holy mountain of Zion. It's a verse from Isaiah 8.18. Perhaps you've wondered, why even think about building the holy temple if the sanctuary was a copy and a shadow of what is in heaven? Serves in the sanctuary, the genuine tabernacle set up by the Lord. The Jerusalem temple was always more than a structure. It was a physical home for the Holy Spirit. God himself made this statement. Let me build me a house. Let them build me a house and I will live shaken in the midst of them. See also Exodus 25, 8, Exodus 40, 34 to 35, 1 King 8, 11. Shekinah, derived from the Hebrew word for dwelling, is used in rabbinic writings and Bible translations to refer to God's presence in the world. The word is not found in the Hebrew Bible itself. This divine presence left the temple and the prophet Ezekiel was there to see it. On the Temple Mount in Jerusalem, however, he also beheld the reconstruction of a house of God that would last for all time. The Lord's splendor came into the temple through the eastern gate. From deep inside the temple, I picked up on a voice. This, he told the man, would be his throne and his feet's resting spot. Right here in this land of Israel, I shall make my home forever. For the full context, see Ezekiel 43, 4-7. Medieval Jewish philosopher and Torah scholar Rambam, Rabbi Moses Maimonides, wrote that the temple will always be significant. In Hilchos Ba'is La Bechaira, The Laws of God's Chosen House, he outlined the temple's dual function, aiming to make known to humankind the presence of God, which was said to rest atop the Ark of the Covenant's mercy seat. When we meet there between the cherubim that guard the Ark of the Covenant, I will give you instructions for the Israelites. As the verse from Exodus 25:22 says, to make it easier for the necessary sacrifices to be offered. However, the Jewish people have not been able to make these sacrifices 
since the destruction of the Second Temple in AD 70. In reality, the Temple is required to fulfill 202 of the Torah's 613 laws, in the context of Temple University. David Roberts' account of the Roman siege and destruction of Jerusalem under Titus's command in the year 70 AD. Without the Third Temple in Jerusalem, Jews today pray to the God of Israel and study the Torah at their neighborhood synagogues. The sacrifice of animals has been replaced by the acts of prayer, repentance, and charity known as the Tefillah, Teshuvah, and Tzedakah. Animal sacrifices may seem to be a thing of the past, but biblical prophecy indicates that this is far from the case. According to Ezekiel, the Lord has outlined the sacrifices that would be made in the future temple. The north and south apartments, which look out onto the temple courtyard, are the priest's rooms, and it is there that the priests who come near the Lord will consume the holiest of gifts. For this reason, the grain offerings, sin offerings, and guilt offerings will all be brought there. But an important question arises not only for Jews, but for all followers of Yeshua. Will the third temple be the temple of Ezekiel, where the divine presence once again resides, or will some other presence reside in another temple? The Dome of the Rock is currently located on Temple Mount, the Antichrist, Jesus Christ, Daniel, and the Third Temple. Important information about the function of a restored temple in the end times can be found in the prophetic books of Daniel and the Brit Chedasha. According to the prophecies of both Daniel and Yeshua, the Anti-Messiah will pollute the Third Temple before the Second Coming of the Messiah. They both refer to the spiritual profanation of the Temple as the abomination of desolation. So when the abomination that creates desolation, as prophesied by Daniel, is set up in the holy place, those in Judea should flee to the mountains. Please read Daniel 9.27 aloud to make sure you understand. In the 70 weeks prophecy, Daniel 9.21-24, the prophet predicts the destruction of Jerusalem and the rebuilt temple, the death cut off of the Messiah, and the final destruction of Jerusalem and the temple. In Daniel, we learn that the temple will be demolished before the Messiah's death. After 62 weeks, the Messiah will be killed and left with nothing, and the followers of the future king will demolish Jerusalem and the temple, and a torrent will wash away its remnants. The battle will continue until the very end. Ruin is certain. In the end, the Lord will triumph. Just 40 years after Yeshua HaMashiach's Jesus the Messiah, head was cut off by his execution on a tree, the prophecy was fulfilled in 70 AD with the destruction of the temple. As a result of our research into several prophecies about the end of the world, we are convinced that the anti-Messiah, who is described by Daniel as a prince or ruler, will arrive in the future. A peace pact confirmed by Daniel will be broken in the middle of its one week, often understood to be seven years, and he, the prince, will make some translations say confirm a firm covenant with the many for one week but amid the week he will put an end to sacrifice and grain offering, and on the wing of abominations will come one who makes desolate, some interpretations say, set up an idol on the wing or precipice of the temple, even until a destruction, one that is decreed, is poured out on the one who makes Daniel 9.27, Matthew 24.15, 2 Thessalonians 2.4. The Antichrist will make the same claim to the deity. The Antichrist will oppose and elevate himself over everything that is named God or is worshipped to the point where he sets himself up in God's temple, proclaiming himself to be God. The main Jewish groups preparing for the rebuilding of the Third Temple and the revival of sacrifices are the Temple Institute and the Temple Mount and Eretz Yisrael Faithful Movement. Preparations are being made by other groups as well. On the Mount, one person proposes setting up a tabernacle-style tent, while another suggests erecting a synagogue in one of the four corners of the raised area. Why? Buildings don't just collapse out of the sky, as Temple Institute director Chaim Richman explains in his Mythbuster videos. He then cites Exodus 23.8 to support his claim that it's a mitzvah to build the temple, and that Jews should be carrying out all 613 mitzvot, which necessitates a temple. In addition, he claims that the third temple will return the light back into the world that was expelled from the Temple Mount when the Lord's divine presence left. The temple, he says, will reconnect all of creation with one another. Because of the Holy Temple, every person has the chance to have a personal, dynamic connection with God and reach his or her fullest potential. However, we can see that an alternative reality for the Temple exists, according to the texts of Daniel 9 and 11 and the Brit Chadasha. Nonetheless, all the necessary clothing and utensils for the rituals have been made. The abuv, a three-tiered stand used to roast the Omer during Passover, 
is pictured on the left among the copper dishes for the third temple. Coal for roasting the barley is located in the middle tier. The copper pot used to prepare the offering meal may be seen on the far right in the background. Also, Israel is now breeding a red heifer to be sacrificed as part of the ritual cleansing of priests and vessels before they are allowed entry into the holiest of sacred places on earth. The Temple Institute has prepared this replica 24 karat golden menorah for use in the Third Temple. All preparations have been made for the reconstruction of the Third Temple. That is everything excluding the actual plot of ground on which to construct it. Since its liberation in 1967, the Muslim world has made considerable attempts to claim the entire 37-acre platform as its sacred place, referring to it in Arabic as Al-Aram Al-Arf, the Noble Sanctuary. The Muslim world has become skilled at organizing riots on the Temple Mount and terror in the streets of Israel to save the Noble Sanctuary. The likelihood of such violence occurring increases whenever there is talk of a Jewish presence being created on the Temple Mount or of its Muslim structures being damaged. A Jewish man stares out over the Al-Aqsa Mosque, the third holiest building in Islam, which was constructed in 705 and is known for its silver dome. It borders the Temple Mount's southern side. A peace proposal that would allow the Jewish people to build a temple on the mount that King David bought would require a man who is extremely revered, trusted, and recognized by both Muslims and Jews. Daniel 9.27 warns that this man will shatter the peace plan but we should rest certain that God is still in control of the situation, no matter who or what this man is or what turmoil he brings. According to Psalm 121.4, King David asserts, He who watches over Israel shall never slumber nor sleep. Since 1948, when Israel was prophetically reborn as a nation, according to Isaiah 66.8, we know that the end-time Bible prophecy concerning the Third Temple is short to be realized. Join us as we press on into the last days to bring the Prince of Serenity, Yeshua HaMashiach, to the Jewish people so that he may dwell among them and fill them with joy and peace they have never experienced. That's for the video today. If you want to see more such videos like this, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching.